You've seen the Iron Man movies, and now you want a smart home that comes to life. But wouldn't that cost you hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars just to even get started? Well, maybe if you paid somebody, but you're better than that. So let's work on building a smart home that is both cheap and reliable together so that we can do this. Jarvis, give me my suit. Okay, maybe not that. Get it myself, I guess. But maybe something more like this? Welcome home. This is going to be a multi-part series, which at the surface may sometimes seem a little bit overambitious, but stick with me and I promise you that we can rule the world together with our smart home AI. <laughs> Smart homes today come in a wide variety of styles, but you're probably familiar with the Google Home or the Alexa. You might have even been gifted one. But for many people, they're kind of seen more as a party trick and they'll just sit on the shelf collecting dust until they have guests over and then they can talk with it and have some fun. That's not really a smart home though, is it? And so for the people that do use it, barking commands at this illuminated hockey puck on your table, which seemingly only hears you half of the time, seems a lot more difficult than just going over to the wall and flipping the switch yourself. But so this is why a true smart home is something that is more than just voice controlled. It's something that's automated. Quite honestly, if you think about it, we all have a routine that we follow on a daily basis, especially when you're waking up, right? You may not wake up at the same time every day, but when you wake up, you often do follow the same sequence of events that helps get your day going. So wouldn't it be nice if before you wake up in the morning, your lights in your bedroom just started to fade in naturally? gradually waking you up instead of that loud iPhone alarm, you could just wake up before it even goes off. Or maybe you have your shower playlist that you like to listen to every morning, and then as you go into the bathroom, that playlist starts playing on shuffle automatically. You didn't have to thumb through your music cap to get it going. Or while you're wrapping up your shower, your coffee maker in the kitchen comes on automatically and starts brewing a pot of coffee. When people visit my place and they see my home automations in action, they're often bewildered, they think it's so cool, but they also don't think it's something that they're capable of doing because they think it's out of their reach, it's out of their you know grasp, but that's not the case. The software used to power all this stuff is very intuitive and it's far more flexible than the traditional apps you'll find on the market. These are very limited in what they can do. They might scratch the surface, but they don't get as complex as you would like them to. And it's good to start off on a platform that lets you expand if you want to, or keep it simple if you want to. Plus, if I'm being honest, there's nothing more cool than seeing a home automation that you've scripted come to life. And when I say scripted, I want to emphasize that there's no coding involved in this tutorial series. Anybody can follow this tutorial and get set up, regardless of your level of experience. In this series, we're going to work on home automations together. And using the foundational knowledge you get from this, you'll be able to create your own home automations. Subscribe to be notified of the next episode. And if it's already out, you should be able to click it right now. See you in the next one.